Good morning everyone and welcome back to Morning Markets on Wednesday the 29th of March. Today we're going to be discussing UK equities in the context of the volatility we've seen in asset markets over this month. So for those of you who have dialled into our podcasts over the last few weeks, you'll know at great length the detail behind the regional banking crisis in the US and also the buyout of Credit Suisse by UBS. But what may be lost through all this noise is that it's actually the UK stock market which has underperformed this month. So whereas equity markets in both the US and Japan are actually up on the month, the UK, along with China, is actually down. And what we spend some time today talking about why we think the UK market may be down. The first reason is actually that the disinflationary pressures we've been talking about, which are coming in the pipeline for the UK, are actually being realised through the Commodities Index and we know that the UK equity market has particularly high exposure to the price of commodities and that index, the underlying reference index for global commodities, has fallen this month and is actually back to the lows of February 2022. So for the sectors within the index for UK which are particularly exposed to um, commodities, that's pulling down the prices of those sectors. Also it's not talked about in the news, but one of the strongest performing currencies this month has actually been the pound sterling. So the Japanese yen has been the strongest performing major currency this month, but sterling has been right on its heels and it's actually up 2.5% over the month. Now this is a particularly uh, a pointed concern for the translation effect for foreign earnings from nationals based here, putting their earnings back into sterling terms. So that means they've actually fallen this month because of the strength of sterling. So together with the disinflationary forces from commodities and the disinflationary forces from the price of sterling, that's probably weighing to some extent on these more globally sensitive pockets of the market. There's also domestic issues which we've talked about before. And to hammer the point home again about UK inflation, Kantar, the online research group, have refreshed their analysis for UK food inflation. And through to, through to the middle of February, it was actually up around about 17% on the year. So there are still inflationary forces building within the UK and indeed Next Retail gave an update on their expected price rises for the rest of the year and they expect to raise prices by about 7% for their spring and summer collections, lowering that to around 3% for their autumn and winter collections. So there are still domestic price pressures here in the UK whilst global price pressures appear to be fading. And that seems to be weighing more in the UK this month than other equity markets. So. We'll put all this together for you on Friday when Chris Leland wraps up the month and how that's worked out for all asset class markets. 